Hello, amazing people. Welcome back to my channel, guys. How are you all doing today? Hope you're all generally fine. Today, guys, I'm going to show you how to make this very beautiful and stylish notch collar kimono jacket. You want to see how I did this? Then stick around with me to the end. Let's do this together. Yes, guys. So here, of course, is the print that I'm working with, okay? Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and lay this on the table. And, of course, I'm going to make use of this um, plain satin fabric I'll be using as well for the collar, of course, and also the band on the sleeve. So I just have to iron my interfacing first in order to, you know, save time, okay? Yes, guys. So setting this aside now, so we'll concentrate on the main piece here. So you can see I've gone ahead to lay my fabric. And, of course, I folded it into two twice. So one representing from the front and the other for the back. So for the width of the fold, I use the biggest measurement here, which is the hip. That's 44 divided by 4. Okay, I have 11. Added one um, 4 inches extra to it, which made it worth 15. Then for the length, I'm using uh, the length of 44. This is the actual length of the um, African print. Okay, yes. Yeah, so when I take away my hemming allowance, I think I'll have about 42 there, which is okay because I want it to be like a three-quarter length jacket. Okay, so totally depends on what you want. So here I'm going ahead to mark out the vertical lines. The chest line, I marked that at 9. The waistline, I marked that at 17. And the hip line, I marked that at 24. So you can see I'm going ahead well, to rule the lines there. Okay, yeah. So the next thing I want to do is to take the slope, that 3 by 8 inches mark, marking my 8 inches down there. And I'm using 1 inches for the slope. Coming to the tip there to also mark what 3 inches. Okay, so I'll go ahead now and create my slope like so. Okay, yes, guys. So after this now, the next thing I'll do now is to mark the shoulder width. I'm working with 15 inches. So divide that by 2, that's 7.5, right? Add 0 0.5 inches to it, that makes it 8. So you can see me going ahead to extend my 8 inches mark to the chest line there. Yeah, so this is for me to create what my armhole. So going ahead to get the midpoint there, 8 divided by 2, that's 4. Marking that down, go inward by 0 0.5 inches and of course create the curve to have my front armhole. Okay, yeah. So and at that same point, the midpoint there, I'm also going to curve what for my back armhole. So like, this is quite... Um, um, familiar right yes guys so that's it there so the next thing is to impute the bust measurements um which is um, 38 divided by 4 that's 9.5 i'm going ahead to add as much as 4 inches okay yeah because i really want it to be a free jacket so this also depends on you you can add 2 inches for um, seam allowance you can add 3 depending on what you want okay yeah so for the waist circumference is also 36 divided by 4 half 9 i'm going ahead to add 4 inches then for the hip was 11 right adding also what 4 inches so you can see this is just straightforward yeah so for the um the lowest point there i'm also going to impute the same what hip measurement there so it's just a straight cut you know jacket there there's nothing you know pencil or anything just a straight cut one there yeah so just going ahead to connect all the points there from the bust um the bust to the waist and all the way to the hip and the length of the jacket there so you can see these guys were done with the side shape in there now I'm going ahead to mark um, the neck width of 3 inches. Okay, for the back neckline, I'm going to be using a neck depth of 1.5. So you can see me creating my curve there. Okay, neck width of 3 and neck depth of 1.5. Right for the front, I'm just going to do 10 inches in depth. And of course, still maintaining that 3 inches mark. So this is just for me to create a more like a V-shape there. Because remember, the front slit is going to be open. Remember, it's a jacket. So the front slit, we're going to be slitting that open as well. Okay? Yeah. So guys, we're done here. You can see this very, very um, straightforward, right? So just going ahead with to call this um, entire piece out guys if you've not liked this video please go ahead and like this video i appreciate that a lot okay and if you've not subscribed please don't forget to smash that subscribe button i really really appreciate that thank you so much guys so setting aside the front piece i'm just going ahead to uh, you know cut the armhole there so this is the armhole for the front piece i'm going ahead to also what cut that neckline the 10 inches in depth there okay so after this then i can now what slit it open okay yeah so that's just what i'm doing so we're done here guys you can see uh front view here slitted open yeah and you can also see what the back view here you can see these guys yeah so yeah what we're going to do now is towards 
um, is to go ahead what, and measure because I want to cut out a facing. I'm just cut out a facing for this front piece, okay? So I have my piece of fabric. I'm just going to lay it, um, you know, on the table. So I'm cutting facing for both the front and the back piece, okay? This is what we're going to do. If you want, you can cut out a lining if you want to, okay? So you cut a full lining just like you cut your fabric, but I just want a facing here. So you can see me shaping out the front piece there. You can see, so I'm going to have two pieces, right? For both, um, you know, the for both front the front piece there, so you can see just the exact same shape we have there. So after that, I'm going to now mark out um the width, the width of my case there. I want it to be four point five. Okay, yeah. So by the time I hem on both ends, it's still going to reduce to about three point five. So I'm just working with it. So you can see what I'm doing. This is just um straightforward there. And of course, I have this um, for the two piece, which represent for the two side um, front piece. Now, the next thing I'm also cutting out for the back facing. So this is just me tracing out um, already what I have, and I'm also using the the depth, the depth of the facing. I'm also using four point five, just like I did for the front piece. So you can see this. So I'll also go ahead and iron my interfacing. Okay, I'll be ironing interfacing on these um, facings, yeah, and just for both the front and the back, yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, after that, now the next thing I'm going to do now is to go ahead and join the shoulders. Okay, yeah, I'm going to join the shoulders. After joining the shoulders. Then I'll also go ahead and join the sides. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'll go finish that up. And here, guys, I'm done joining the shoulder and the side. So you can see this right now. Yeah, so our front uh, piece is ready. So I want to get the midpoint of my neckline. So I have to fold, making sure that the shoulder joinings are matching up. So I'm just trying to get um, the midpoint of the neckline. That's the best way to get that. So going ahead to chalk it down so that it will be more visible, okay? Yeah, so what I'm going to do now is to what, um, you know, make a fold. I'm going to make it a half inches fold all the way, all the way around. So I'll be using my iron to do this, okay, to help it relax. So you can see I'm just running this all the way from the lowest point, go around and come down to the other side. So what I did here, I'm also going to do for the facing. So you can see my facing, I've ironed my interfacing already. Uh, so what I will do before doing that, I'll also go ahead and join the necklines, okay? Yeah, so just like I did uh, for the main jacket there so i'll go ahead and join the necklines i'm demonstrating with my pin now after joining the neckline it looks it looks more like our neck um, line right so i'll go ahead and now fold make that same half inches fold i'll be doing for the main jacket do it all the way around so this is just me using my iron to do that so i'll go finish that up and here, guys, you can see I've gone ahead to do that. You can see that um, 0 0.5 inches fold all the way round. Okay. Yes, guys. So I did it for this um, facing here and, of course, for my main um, jacket as well. So you can see this as well. I've made that fold. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. Well ironed. Okay. Yeah. So um, the next thing I'm going to do now is to take the point where I want my collar to actually, you know, stop at. So I'm going to take it from that shoulder point there. Okay. I'm tracing uh, my tip to the point where I want my collar to stop. Around the waistline is okay. So I'm using about 20 inches. Okay. 20 inches is what I'm using. You can make yours a little bit higher if that's what you want. So I'm just going ahead to mark it on the other side. Okay. So that's where my collar will stop okay yes guys so uh, my collar is going to run through from that point to the um other edge there so what i'm going to do is to cut out half you can see me taking my measurement from that point we mark that i'm going to stop at the midpoint of the neckline there okay yeah so this is just a 22 is what i have if you want to confirm if you take it from that same midpoint and run it through to the other side um you also have the same um measurement as well so the reason why i'm making it halfway so that when i cut out my collar is going to be in two pieces then i can now join it okay yeah so that's what i'm going to do um right now so this is the time i'll be making use of my plain fabric here so already iron my interfacing so i'm going to be cutting out two pieces actually so two pieces like i said is going to be joined it's going to be half halfway then i'll cut another set of two pieces which makes it four piece in total okay because we are going to be having one as our lining okay 
as to go along, you understand better. So I'm just making my fold into four so that I can get the exact four pieces, right? Yeah, so what i'm doing now is to take note of what the width of the collar i'm going to do 4.5 inches right so 4.5 inches uh you know by the time i sew i sew on one end and attach it to my uh, main jacket it's still going to reduce to about 3.5 there about okay yeah so i'm just marking out a starting point there to mark my um 25 inches was the actual length um for the color right but i'm not just going to mark exactly 25 i'm just adding one inches extra which makes it 26 because we're going to be doing some joining on both ends so by the time we take away 0 0.5 inches we'll come back to our 25 inches so you can see me uh, marking out that point okay so i'm just going ahead to cut out the excesses so this is just what we're working with now 26 inches now by 4.5 okay yeah so just going ahead to mark my four um, 4.5 there you can see me going ahead to also what mark out the straight lines yeah so just cutting out the excesses there as well so you can see this now now um in order to create that uh, you know curve effect the notch effects we have on the lowest part of that color there you can see i went up by 1.5 inches i'm just going to create a slant you can do um two inches you can go up by two inches to make the the curve to be deeper okay so i'm doing 1.5 then from that edge there, I'll go inwards by what 0 0.5 inches, okay? You can even do 1 inches more if you want to make it deeper. So this is just the notch effect that I'm trying to create there. You can see this 1.5 um, upwards, then about 0 0.5 inches inward. And that's just it. Then afterwards, I'll be slitting open that unfold part. So you can see me cutting out my curve there. Just take your time and gently um, do this. You can see creating that notch there just to give it that v um shape effect there and you can see this okay yes guys so there's nothing really really difficult here. so you can see just created that um, um curve shape there so i'll go ahead and slit open the on foot part so if you see this now you see that we have four pieces in total right yeah so you see that we have four pieces so two pieces i'll be using for on um, the main and two piece i will represent what the line will be using it to turn it over so you can see this yeah so what i'll do now is to arrange it properly now you can see this now i'm going to be joining it was on that um top there you can see me using my pin to demonstrate that down now yeah i'll join it just the same thing i did i'll do the same thing for the other piece okay so you can see how this will look afterwards okay yeah so the essence of that joining that joining is the part that is going to be on the midpoint of the neckline i hope you understand now yeah so i'm going ahead to do the same thing for this um other piece right because we said one is going to what represent the lining okay yeah so you can see this so by the time i'm done joining it now uh where i pinned it okay um, just trying to show you the view of how it looks already, right? Yeah, so by the time I'm done joining it now, so what I will do now is to lay it over each other, making sure that those two points that we join are matching each other. Very, very important, okay? Yeah, so we'll now go ahead and sew. So you will sew, so just carefully sew, sew through those notch area, the curve area, and there, yeah, that's it, and the other way around. So the other straight part is the part we are going to be turning it open. So you can see I've got ahead to make my stitch you can see this and also very important notch all those edges the curved part and the notched part just notch everything so i'm going to use my scissors to you know poke out those edges okay carefully doing this so that you don't you know tear up the piece here yeah so that's it guys going ahead to iron it and this is what it looks like you can see this though so our color is ready to be fixed so you can see the view right now okay yeah so it's time to fix our color now so what i'm going to do now is to of course match it up or to that um um the center point okay yeah so what we are doing now is to um top stitch so the reason why we have to make that 0 0.5 inches on our main piece okay we are going to be top stitching there are different ways you can actually fix this but because i'm going to be turning this with a facing or a lining as you mean you're using a lining that is why i have to 
chop stitch this way because I want my color to really relax, to have that feel when I turn it over to the other side. If I wasn't using a facing or anything, there is no point top stitching. I would just sew inwards and turn it the other way around, okay? Which means I'll be weaving the edges. But I want to use a facing. That's why I'm doing this. So you can see me top stitching. I'm just using my pin to demonstrate this now. So I started from the midpoint. I started from the midpoint. We took note of that, making sure that that joining we have on our collar is matching up with the midpoint. So I'm just going to do it from that midpoint straight down to where our collar will end so when i'm done with one part i'll go back from that same midpoint again down to the other end okay yeah so you just need a little bit of patience to do. just carefully align this properly making sure that you are top stitching just half inches on that what on that collar so you can see what i'm doing now so this is just a demonstration this is how i am going to make my sew you can see this so by the time you are done stitching okay you can see if you have that collar you can see it sliding to the other side that's just what we want to achieve so i'm going ahead to finish up the uh, pinning to the other way round okay yeah so this is just practically what we're going to do here you can see how this is looking after top stitching you can see the view right now okay yes guys so once this is done it is time for us to introduce our facing or a line assuming you're using a line right now that same facing now also indicating the midpoint right i'm going ahead to attach it what on that point on the same midpoint of our neckline so you're going to also take it the same way you're going to be top stitching as well the same way from the midpoint all the way down and to the other side so the only difference between your facing here is that your facing is going to run above just you run through um the points where your collar stops and it will keep going straight down to the world to the lowest point of the jacket right yeah so to hide off um the other edges right so that's just the importance of it not just um you know closing up the parts where the jacket stops okay so this is what is going to look like by the time you're done Trust me, guys, this will be properly, um, it will look in it, and of course, you give it a very good price. So, that's how it's going to look. You can see the view already, okay? Yes, guys, so that's what I'm going to do. So, once you're done um, attaching your collar, the next thing, of course, to do, attach your sleeve and hem the lowest point. And, guys, this jacket will be ready. It's as easy as that, guys. So, just fix any um, sleeve of your choice, guys. Thank you so much, guys. We have come to the end of today's tutorial. If you find Find this helpful please don't forget to like share and subscribe have a wonderful day